evening, everybody. Uh, great to be able to come back together this evening and share from the Word of God in our Moravian Daily Text for the evening. Now, I joked yesterday uh, that, strangely enough, as it's offered to us, um, at least in my app of the Moravian Daily Text, we just were missing that last um, that last verse of Second Corinthians. And I don't know, Shakara, it, it isn't in today. Actually, we're going to begin um, with the, the letter to the Galatians. But just in case any of you completists would struggle with that, um, let me complete Second Corinthians for you, uh, where Paul finishes with, here it is interesting, the only Trinitarian blessing um, in his letters. Uh, you'll see how Second Corinthians, uh, sorry, the letter to the Galatians begins a little different, but Second Corinthians finishes with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And if perhaps you're from a more traditional church uh, setting and, and practice of worship, uh, you might be really familiar with saying the grace in that fashion. Interesting. Paul not commonly putting uh, the, the, the members of the Trinity together in that way. When he begins the letter to the Galatians, um, he talks about uh, verse 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, God and the Father, uh, and, and God the Son, uh, Jesus Christ. But there you go. Anyhow, we are beginning into this letter that Paul uh, wrote to the church in Galatia, not just a singular city or place, but an area or province. Um, we've got the churches here from Pisidian Antioch, uh, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. Um, they're places that you find in the book of Acts. You can just track through the book of Acts again as to how it was that Paul ended up in these places, planting the churches, seeing people saved. Now he's writing to them. And what will become immediately apparent is he plunges right in. There's the grace and the peace. There's the, the Lord Jesus who gave himself up for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. Anybody want delivering from the present age? Um, maybe. According to the will of our Godfather, um, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Now, just it sounds a bit like just Christian language, doesn't it? Like the kind of thing a Christian might say, because, you know, we talk a bit funny. Um, to whom be the glory forever and ever. But actually, this is intentional. Just as Paul finishing his letter to the Corinthians with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it's, it's intentional. So here he's saying, actually, he's wanting to present glory to God because that's the intention of his life. The gospel matters. The, the trajectory of our lives matter. This Jesus who gave himself for our sins, he is the one to whom uh, all glory and honour and power and majesty uh, return. Um, this is not just using words in a christian -y kind of a way. This is an intention. And his intention is clear um, because it's contested. He dives right into, in verse 6, um, I am astonished. Um, I, you know, Paul, he comes across, doesn't he, in so many of his letters as quite fatherly. Um, and, you know, it is a, it's a fatherly thing to kind of have, you know, the, the extremes of emotion and, the, you know, the big statements. Um, you, you know, Father's Day is coming up on Sunday. You know, it doesn't take very long for we men to just drift into this. Um, you know, saying all the dad statements and, uh, you know, just going around the house, turning off every light switch and um, all that kind of stuff. And I find myself, I, I, I go, when I'm trying to perhaps discipline a situation, you know, you go straight um, to, to number 10, don't you, on the scale. And, it, you know, my kid was swinging off the, the French windows at the back of the house, the handle. And so I responded with, you need to get off the handle. If you break it, you'll never go into the garden again. Um, and Erin resists the urge to laugh at me. It's a bit of a dad thing to use kind of big language, big statements. I go a little bit to extremes. But there's good reason here for Paul. I am astonished. Why? Because they're quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ, turning to a different gospel. Um, does this sound familiar to you? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 11, we were just there, weren't we? And Paul was saying, look, these false teachers and apostles have been coming. They're preaching to you a different gospel. It seems insanity, doesn't it? The very idea of the word gospel is good news. You know, perhaps from our perspective, it seems intrinsically linked to uh, the truth about Jesus. But all the way through Christian history, it's been contested. People have come with their own agendas, their own desire for self, 
um, they come actually motivated by the, the father of life, Satan himself, to confuse and deceive and to lead astray. Here, most likely, people are coming with their, uh, as was termed, the Judaizing kind of tendency, saying that, well, as well as the cross of Christ, you need to be circumcised, you need to adhere to the Mosaic law, you need to do that, da 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 piling up works upon uh, the grace of Jesus Christ, which we know is alone sufficient for salvation. Paul, interestingly, goes on to say, look, it doesn't matter who brings you these false gospels. He says, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed, an angel from heaven. Interesting, isn't it? I said that false gospels, false teachings, they're as old as the hills, but you know, you just look at something like Mormonism, for instance, that within its uh, teaching says that an angelic visitor brought the new revelation. Uh, Paul clearly was you know, ahead of that. Anyways, whether he's speaking to the Galatian Christians who are being twisted by this Judaizing, legalistic, works-based salvation, or whether he's kind of almost kind of foreseeing, you know, cultic practices like Mormonism, um, false gospels are as old as the hills and as new as, well, tomorrow. Always, always, always the gospel is contested because it is the truth. It is the saving truth, the only way for us to be presented right before God and know life in its fullness now and for eternity. This is how essential the gospel is. In that regard, it's not so surprising that it be, should be so contested, nor is it so surprising that Paul should be so forceful in his language in defense of it. He says again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be accursed. Come on, you might not consider yourself to ever have preached something false to others. Maybe you wouldn't. But do you preach falsehood to your own heart? Do you preach the falsehood that you need to work a little bit harder to earn your salvation? Do you preach the falsehood that maybe there's just a little bit of his hidden wisdom here or there and, and somehow you're getting to know the really true truth? Hmm. Who are you trying to please? Paul says, are we trying to seek the approval of man or of God? Please man or God? No, we're servants of Jesus. So we're servants of his truth. We're servants of his cross. We're servants of the wisdom that is only revealed by Christ. It's not man's gospel, it's God's gospel. We don't get to play around with these eternal truths. We received it through the revelation of Jesus Christ and everything else. Secondary at best, irrelevant at worst. Come on. Uh, these things, they consistently come up. So I want us just to do it for a minute or two. Just look at our own hearts and say, what gospel am I believing? What gospel am I preaching to my heart? What gospel does my life preach to those around me? I might not try and preach with my mouth a false gospel, but my life might preach things that aren't really true about Jesus. Come on, we just rest for a minute and, and ask the Holy Spirit to, to show us these things, these, these false gospels that really do captivate our hearts. Come on, Holy Spirit, would you convict us of sin and show us where it is we're believing things that aren't true about Jesus and the gospel. I'm just going to take a moment with you, God. Help us in this. And God, we ask as well, make us fluent in the gospel. Would you gospel us? God, oftentimes we live our lives according to other worldviews or other ideas. They captivate us so quickly. Return us again to the truth of the gospel. Uh, I've heard it said, God, that the gospel is not just the diving board, but it's the whole pool. But I know I forget that. I quickly swim on to what's next. Help me. Return me to your gospel simple gospel, the saving gospel, the true gospel of new life in Jesus Christ alone, by faith alone, through grace alone. Thank you, God. Amen. Hey, if you don't know so much about this gospel of Jesus Christ, I'd love to share that with you. Uh, let us know. Send us a message, comment here. Come along on Sunday. You're very welcome. 
And uh, we'd love to share with you something of the, the, the gospel, the good news, that there is new life in Jesus for you, as for me, as for anybody who will receive. Well, good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.